The story of human evolution in South Africa may just be humankind's origin story, or it may not. There are a number of theories about where humans first came into existence, but the only thing scientists are pretty confident about is that our species originated somewhere in Africa. It's important to remember that human evolution is like a complex puzzle. It changes all the time depending on the fossils we find and what they are willing to tell us, or if they can tell us anything at all. The fossils found in South Africa play a big part in piecing our early history together, and they reveal a pretty fascinating story about creation, evolution, near extinction, survival, and the eventual success of our species. To understand the full picture, we have to go back about two to four million years ago to a time when our first pre-human ancestors roamed these lands. South Africa was home to a number of species that played a part in our evolution, such as Paranthropus robustus, Australopithecus africanus, and Australopithecus sediba. All three species were first discovered here in a location that is now famously known as the Cradle of Humankind. It is one of the most valuable sites on the planet and is thought to hold around 40% of the world's human ancestor fossils. Australopithecus africanus deserves a special mention. Its discovery in 1925 in the small town of Tawung turned the focus of human evolution to Africa for the very first time. This discovery marked the start of paleoanthropology as a discipline in South Africa and greatly influenced its development on a global scale. This species was a major piece in our evolutionary puzzle. It was the first time researchers actually saw evidence of our ancestors walking upright. Now that's a pretty cool find in South Africa. Around 2.6 million years ago, our ancestors were evolving and becoming smarter. And this is where the genus Homo has its beginnings. South Africa was now home to upgraded early humans. Roaming these lands were Homo habilis, Homo agaster, Homo erectus, and the recently discovered Homo naledi. These species, as well as many others across Africa, would eventually give way to us, the Homo sapiens. So you may be wondering, why are we all grouped together? Well, the genus Homo can be viewed as one exclusive family tree, with each branch representing the different species. Each species, although different in many ways, also share varying degrees of physical and behavioral characteristics. The common characteristics in our family tree are a large and complex brain, the ability to walk upright, a smaller flatter face and smaller teeth, fully opposable thumbs, tool making abilities, social and symbolic behaviors, and the use of language to communicate. Although this family tree may look happy at first glance, this is far from the truth. It is plagued with competing views as scientists try to understand what truly makes us human and whether or not all the species in our family tree deserve this classification. Homo habilis and an East African species known as Homo rudolfensis are the most primitive of our ancestors and are constantly in the hot seat. Some believe they should be kicked out of the group and instead placed in the Australopithecus genus. Even Homo agaster is not safe. There have been polarizing discussions about whether it deserves its own species or whether it should be grouped as an early Homo erectus. Yes, in this family tree we have our issues, but which family doesn't? I guess we have to embrace our broken branches and incomplete history until we find more fossils to fill in these empty gaps. It's time for another special mention. And this time it goes to Homo erectus. This fascinating ancestor of ours was the first to closely resemble us, the Homo sapiens. It had human-like body proportions. It was the first known ancestor to migrate out of Africa and there is a good possibility it was the first to cook food. But there's more. Ever wondered what species lived on the planet the longest? You guessed it, it's Homo erectus. Fossil evidence suggests it was the longest surviving of all our human relatives. It existed for more than 1.5 million years. Currently, that's more than triple the time that Homo sapiens have been around. And it's even more impressive that they achieved this in a constantly changing environment and climate. 
A big reason our early ancestors survived, thrived, and even evolved on the lands of South Africa is through their use of stone tools. And we can thank Homo habilis for this. It was the first species to make and use tools such as cobble cores and simple flakes. These were used for cutting, chopping, or scraping. Tools played a big part in our evolution and it allowed us to easily butcher animals for our consumption. This resulted in a high protein diet which was critical in the evolution of the human brain. At this point, it is believed that early humans were scavengers. They would wait for animals to die of natural causes before eating them. Around 1.4 million years ago, humans were evolving and so too were their tools. Around this time, Homo erectus came into existence and their tools were much more sophisticated and consisted of hand axes, hammers and choppers. Around 250,000 years ago, our ancestors took a giant evolutionary leap. They were able to make fire, understood the concept of a home base with their chosen real estate in caves and improved their weaponry to hunt large grazing animals. In other words, our ancestors were no longer scavengers. They were accomplished hunters and this is where we see the rise of the very first archaic hunter. Anatomically speaking, we began to see the first humans or homo sapiens around 100 to 200,000 years ago. Whether or not Homo sapiens originated in South Africa is still up for debate. The research around this is inconclusive. Some experts believe that Homo sapiens originated from all over the African continent, while others believe that modern humans began in one single East or Southern African population. Scientists have found evidence that the coastal areas of South Africa played a vital role in the survival of Homo sapiens. So even though this region may not have been the birthplace of our species, there's a good chance it saved us from near extinction. Our survival was threatened due to harsh environmental conditions brought on by a long glacial stage known as Marine Isotope Stage 6. This made much of the land uninhabitable and conditions were cold and dry, resulting in a disastrous population decline. Geneticists believe that the surviving population was tiny in number. It could have been as few as several hundred individuals. This means that it's likely that everyone alive today descended from people within a single region and quite possibly a single group from one ethno-linguistic background. And given the narrow genetic diversity of modern humans, it is a very plausible theory. Pinnacle point which is a coastal area located in the province of the Western Cape, played a big role in our survival all those years ago. The area forms part of the Indian Ocean and has a number of caves that were once used by our ancestors as much needed shelter in harsh weather conditions. Being so close to marine life also provided them with nutritious and abundant food like shellfish and plant life. Pinnacle Point may have not only saved us from the brink of extinction, it also helped grow our population until we were quite literally able to take over the world.